Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope that everyone listening to this is in a good state of heart, mind, and iman. My last episode was the tafsir of Surah Baqarah. If you liked it, please let me know and I will definitely continue those series for you guys. So please update me on that one. So, this is a topic that I was intending on just adding into a part two of the series that I started earlier, which was transforming your life and how to become a better Muslim. And I was going to talk about things like how to stop listening to music and whatnot in that. So inshallah, I will be posting that soon. And I was thinking of just throwing this topics in there as well. But recently, I went through something and it put me in a condition where I had no choice but to accept things as they are. And I was facing a lot of disappointment, currently still doing a lot of detachment. And I was like, you know what? Banger episodes come out when your feelings are in it. So here we go. This is healing through acceptance. You know, one of the problems that we have is that we all make unfulfilled promises. We promise something. We say that we're going to do something. We keep an expectation and we never do it. And unfulfilled promises and unfulfilled expectations lead to two things. One, trust issues for the rest of your life. And two, it makes you wonder what stupid, vulnerable state of mind was I in that I decided to trust you. And evidently, with the current situation that I'm in, I'm actually going through both. And it's making me question so many things. And it happened literally Friday. So it's still fresh up in the feelings. So when you're Muslim and you get disappointed, you know, the first thing that you're told to do is be patient, be kind, be this, be that. And it makes you kind of feel overwhelmed sometimes. Because Islam is a way of life. It tells you how to react. It tells you how to do. And when you follow those things, you genuinely are happier. You make better decisions. But it's not always easy to do. And with certain situations, when people disappoint you, they hurt you, they don't keep their end of the promise, someone breaks your heart, whatever it may be, it makes a lot of outrage of emotion inside of you. And when you have people around you telling you, just be patient, just be patient, just be patient, it drives you insane because I can't be patient right now. My feelings are getting me over the board. I'm angry. I want to punch a wall like I'm so pissed off. And you're telling me, oh, just keep patience. And you know, it for me personally, talking on my end, it takes a lot for me to get angry. It takes a lot for me to become outraged or severely disappointed. And I think it happens... Sadly, it hurts a lot more when it comes from your own Muslim brothers and sisters because you don't expect that from them. So, you know, when you get disappointed by someone or someone fails to keep their word, the one thing that I want to tell you, just straight up getting into it, is that this has nothing to do with you. This has nothing to do with you. It is not your fault that someone was not capable enough to fulfill a promise It was not your fault that someone was not capable enough of fulfilling an expectation and being truthful the way that they said that they would. This has nothing to do with you. What part are you in? They made the promise. They said that they would do it. They made a commitment. They failed to complete the action out. They broke your heart. Where in this is it your fault? It's not. And this is something that even I'm registering. So this is something that's going to take you time. You know, we make our worth and our our self-respect really contingent on the way that people treat us. It starts to hang on the way that people treat us. We think that if this person treats me good, they understand my respect, they value me. And if someone treats me bad, then my then my worth is bad and I'm not valuable enough. That's not how this works. If your worth was contingent on how other people see you, how other people care about you, worth would be a useless thing. No one would care for it. And that's what I'm trying to get here. Your worth is not contingent on the people that decide to love you one day, hate you the next, that say that they're interested one day and have absolutely no interest the rest. Your worth is not contingent on these people. Your worth is not contingent on the people that treat you horribly and treat you like crap and tell you that you won't be nothing. Your worth is not from these people. Your worth comes from what you believe you deserve. And the day you realize what you deserve, is the day you'll become a lot more happier. Your worth also comes from your spiritual state in the eyes of God, the way that you are in your worship. One of the sad things of life that I've always heard and I've always seen and it's happened to me and I know it happens to everyone is that we'll get disrespected and we'll be treated less than our worth. We'll be treated less than we are and people justify it. And you know, one thing I always hear quite often in life is that no one owes you anything. That's very, very true. No one in life owes you crap. No one owes you an apology. No one owes you a sorry. No one owes you 
an explanation. No one owes you anything. But I think out of human decency, when it comes to hurting someone, when it comes to not fulfilling your end, an apology is a must. That's my opinion. I don't know how other people see it, but in my opinion, an apology is a must. It is an unsaid rule. You have to. If you hurt someone, you're the reason they're crying, you're the reason that they're heartbroken, you should at least be saying sorry. You should at least acknowledge your mistake. And I think that that comes from basic manners. I've been in situations where people, they'll blatantly hurt me. And sadly, this also comes from Muslim people themselves, blatantly hurt you. Think nothing of it. Think that it was deserving. Think that, oh, you know, you called it on yourself. And they'll just leave it there. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, I know I have to keep sabr, but like, I'm losing my mind. Like, this person just did this to me. What am I supposed to do? And I went through the situation on Friday. And, you know, the first thing I thought was like, I have to be patient. But one of the big things that I've learned that I wanted to share with you guys, and I talk about this quite often on my Discord with a bunch of girls, because I've seen this problem come up everywhere. Sabr is not the enemy of emotion. Having patience doesn't mean that you're not allowed to cry that you're not allowed to feel angry, that you're not allowed to feel disappointed. Who said that having patience means that you have to suppress your emotions and never feel anything again? You're not a robot. You're not here to act still, robotic, dumb, done. You have emotions. You have things in you. You have to feel them. You have to. If you don't, you're just shoving it all under the rug and it's just going to come back and hurt you even more. So this concept that we've created that if you have supper, you won't cry is full of flaws and it's full of really a lot of stupidness because having supper means that no matter what happens, you know that Allah will pave away. So supper goes hand in hand with tawakkal, which basically means trust, trust in Allah. This goes hand in hand. You know that I don't see a route out. I'm confused. There's nothing to do. But I know that if I bear patience... And there's a beautiful hadith where they say that Allah is with those that are brokenhearted. Allah is with those that are patient. So Allah is with you right now, right? So Allah, it's mentioned everywhere in the Quran, the hadiths. Allah loves those that are patient. So you are patient. You can cry. You can feel upset. But you won't harm anyone else. You won't damage anyone else. You won't go out of your way to seek revenge from anyone else. You know that these things are not going to bring you peace. You know that your peace will come from what Allah has decreed. So you're not going to waste your time trying to fight someone. You're not going to waste your time trying to prove someone your worth. If you have to prove someone your worth and prove someone your value, they don't respect you enough to see it. Simple. And I've been in so many situations where people will uncautiously or maybe even intentionally put me in situations where I have to prove my worth, where I have to prove that, oh, I'm religious enough, or I'll have to prove that I'm worthy enough. You don't have to prove your worth to anybody. Your worth is something that every single person should acknowledge and see by the way that you treat yourself. Your worth does not need proving. You don't need to go out there and show every single person that I am demanding of this, I am deserving of this. No, you need to set the limit for yourself and you need to do that for yourself. And right when you start doing that, you will stop tolerating situations that don't serve you anymore. Manipulators will hate when you set boundaries and so they'll start criticizing the boundaries that you've set and they'll tell you that you're stupid for doing it. That's the whole game because when you stop letting yourself become so accessible to hate, to disrespect, to being treated anything less than your worth, people will criticize you. People will say that you're over your head. You're not over your head for respecting yourself and only certain people that have the stamina, the backbone and moreover that have the respect for you in their heart will treat you good. I hate to say this, but sometimes we are actually our own manipulators. By that, I mean, you know, you set a boundary. You tell yourself, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to let myself get hurt like this again. Then something happens that's out of your control. And then automatically you're blaming yourself. I'm the worst person in the world. I don't work hard enough. I'm not good enough. And so you can consistently set a boundary, break the boundary, manipulate yourself, tell yourself not good enough, reset a boundary and do it again. And we end up living in a lifetime cycle of this drama and it becomes hard because then you become your own enemy, you become your own manipulator and no one can rescue you from the cycle and the trauma and the war that you put your own self in. So that that's something that we need to be vigilant about, we need to be careful about. Are you doing that to yourself? And if you want me truthful with you, these past two months have been extraordinarily hard on me and I've been doing that to myself. I've had multiple occasions where I had to leave a really good community. I had to leave really good people that may have strengthened and helped me with my deen. But there were certain situations that 
probably didn't serve me anymore or they hurt my iman they hurt my spirituality more where they hurt me emotionally they hurt my heart i'm the type of person that when i make um any any you really bond anything friendship with anyone i put my 100 percent in it i make sure that my girls are okay and alhamdulillah i received the same back but you know sometimes you have to put yourself first you do you have to put your spiritual needs first and for the past two months, I, I, know, I knew I had to do it, but I just couldn't wrap my head around it and I couldn't get myself to do it because I knew that it would be difficult for me to leave people that I was comfortable with. And that's the thing. It's never easy leaving what you're comfortable with because it feels like home and it's hard to leave home. But sometimes home is not with the people. It's where your heart is comfortable. And my heart wasn't comfortable. And one thing I want to tell you for a fact is to never confuse your comfort for happiness you can be comfortable in a situation and it can no longer serve you you can be comfortable in a situation and it may not make you happy you can be comfortable with someone and they may not be the best person for you so you need to be very very wise about your comfort zone your happiness level and take all these things to account if anything is even putting a little scratch on your iman dip it leave it run get away from it and sadly i i had a lot of damage that went on and <sighs> Alhamdulillah, man, Allah Allah rescues you from deep waters. You don't know what's good, you don't know what's bad. But whatever is meant to be will find its way. And I wanted to talk about that about right now. You know, when something's written for you, it's not gonna miss you. This is something we hear so often. I've heard this so often. I post on my Instagram as well, and it's it's something that you hear but you can't take in. Listen to me. If something is written for you, which means it's written in your qadr, which means Allah has wrote it for you, which means Allah is going to make it happen. It's not going to miss you. Meaning, no matter what anyone does, no matter what you do, no matter what they do, no matter what a whole community does, it's not going to overpower Allah. And when you put your 1000% belief in the statement, you'll notice life becoming a lot more easier. You don't know what's written for you. You don't know what's bad for you. But we cannot chase and stress after every single person, right? Because, again, if, if something's written for you, it won't miss you. You know, I have a lot of people that are like, oh, I was really good at school, but I didn't get into, like, you know, this master's that I want or something like that. Or now I'm stuck at home. If something's written for you, it won't miss you. Perhaps it wasn't written for you this year, but you might get it next year. And that's okay. Perhaps someone wasn't written for you. You really had high expectations. And now you're let down. But it, but it wasn't written for you. It doesn't matter what you do. And I've seen people, they try to go against this statement. They try to make it work. They try to push against it. They try to push against Qadr. And I'm telling you, submission equals happiness. Happiness equals submission. Submit yourself to Allah. Submit yourself to Qadr. Submit yourself to what is, will be. And you'll notice yourself becoming happier. When you notice that things aren't naturally working out, there's no need for you to go out of your way. Force it. Imply it. Apply pressure. It's not going to happen. You're going to hurt yourself. The ones that go against God to try to change it and think that they can all control it. Now, of course, with dua, it can be rewritten. But if you're not even making dua and you're trying to go against it, it's not going to work out in your favor. What's written for you won't miss you. So stop worrying about the people that gave you something, an unfulfilled promise, unfulfilled expectation, broke your heart and left you sitting there. They weren't written for you. Allah had to show you. And one of the harshest things that I've learned really recently is you can ask Allah for anything. You can ask Allah for a house, you might not get it. You can ask Allah for brand new couches, you might not get it. You can ask Allah for a car, you might not get it. You can ask Allah for money, you might not get it. But the one thing you ask Allah for is, if you ask Him for guidance, you will always get guidance. Always. And I asked Allah for guidance, and then I was put in circumstances which felt like I was drowning. And I was like, crap, I got the guidance. Now I actually have to make a move about this. And making the move is honestly the hardest part. One thing that I learned really recently as I grow older is that when you are dealing with someone that is unjust or oppressive, someone that may be a manipulator or a liar, whatever they may be, you need to realize that the fight against injustice and oppression is not always open. It's not always what you see on the news. It's not always what you see in, you know, TV. It's not always what you see even directly in your community. Sometimes it's within your closest people. 
and you might not know that you're fighting against injustice and oppression until Allah puts that guidance upon you. And when it comes upon you, it's not going to be easy. Because you're going to sit there wondering every single day, am I fighting against oppression and injustice? Or am I just being crazy and thinking that I'm doing something when I'm not? Like, am I harming someone? I can't put into words the amount of situations that I've been where I had to take a stand for myself first, which led to a lot of other people taking a stand because there was acts of injustice and oppression going on. But it has never been easy. But I always tell myself, injustice is happening in almost every place, right? In every community, every state, wherever you are, injustice happens. But some of the biggest injustice and oppression happens to the ones that are closest to us. And sometimes you need to get up and take a stand. You won't always find people again with you. It's easy to fight against injustice if it's on the news. If you hear that well, this person killed someone, they're a criminal, yeah, it's easy. The real fight against oppression starts when no one is standing with you. When no one is understanding you and when only Allah has shown you the truth of someone and you have no choice but to take a stand. That is when true fight against oppression starts. That's when true jihad starts. Jihad is not always what you see on the news. It's also about the people closest to you. I had to learn that the hard way. And I had to be in multiple situations in my life over the years, really just growing up. Because I'm 17 now. And in all my years, I've had to fight against a lot of different manipulators and gaslighters and people that'll tell you, you're crazy, you're thinking wrong, da 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 Down the line, truth will come out. You can only lie about something you can only give so many unfulfilled promises until one day Allah will catch you in your track you will pay you will pay for hurting people now I'm not saying that us human beings don't hurt others either no I've messed up I'm not I'm not holier than thou let me tell you all that I'm never going to keep this image I'm holier than thou I don't care how much my platform grows you're never going to see me acting like I'm a perfect person never my whole image is that I am not perfect and I'm being open about that because this is the problem we all act like we're perfect we act like every single person that gives dawah is perfect they're not we're just trying our best to be as religious as we can be but that doesn't mean we're perfect to be truthful i have a set list of things i do every day to take care of my iman and a lot of days those things don't work a lot of days my iman feels like it's falling apart a lot of days i'm just not in it but the one thing that i learned recently that helped me get back into the zone of things is that it doesn't matter how much you're doing it's how you're doing it right so quality over quantity i had a set routine of things i used to do for my iman lots of different things to keep me busy but since i was trying to keep myself busy by raising my iman i was neglecting my emotions and i was in the cycle where i was making myself busy to distract myself from my emotions but then i became too busy to understand how i feel this is a very bad cycle. You don't want to get caught up in it. Your emotions, your iman, they go heart in hand. Now, if you're always depressed and you don't take care of your iman, you need to fix on that. If your iman is skyrocket, but your emotions are still depressed, one thing that I recommend doing is renewing your intention. A lot of us know why we're doing what we're doing. We're like, okay, yeah, this is for Islam. I want to get to Jannah. Okay, whatever. What are you intending on doing with this knowledge? You're just going to sit up there in your brain? You're going to share it with people? You're going to give dawah? You're going to spread it? What are you going to do with this? You need to know. And you need to know, how is this making me feel better? You need to develop a purpose in all the things that you do. And you need to develop a backbone within yourself. In your purpose and the things that align and make you feel the most alive. So renew your intention. And sometimes renewing your intention, honestly, comes out of fearing from Allah. If you hear stories about what will happen on the day of judgment, that stuff is scary. And sometimes when I hear that those stories, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I got I to gotta renew my intention. This is for the fear of Allah. This is for the sake of Allah. So I highly recommend renewing your attention. Sometimes you may be doing a lot, but your heart is not sincerely in it, which is exactly why you're not benefiting. There's no point in you doing all this if you're not benefiting. So, you know, I was the type of person that I was like, I want to learn sirah, tafsir, this, 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 that. But it was like I was bucket load of information but my heart was just down so i've limited myself to nearly just two things that i'm working on currently and i'm going to put my all in those two things and i highly recommend you guys find two things that you're interested in learning when it comes to islam whether it's sita tafsir prophet stories whatever put your brain on that one or two thing and put your all towards it 
put every single bit of energy. You know, I know a lot of people that know a lot, that know a little bit about a lot of things. Then I know a lot of people that know very little things, but they know a lot about just one, two main subjects. I hope that made sense. Did I mess that up? I hope you got, got my point. I know people that are very advanced in one thing and they have no clue about the other. It's okay. Islam is not an all in one subject, but it's about doing it with a sincere heart. Back to one of the main topics, which was in regards to Qadr. And I want to tie this up back here. There is knowledge out there in the world that was written for you to learn. So whatever is written for you to learn, you will learn it. You will sweep it up. It will be in your brain. Now you get to decide what you want to do with it. So be wise about what you learn. Share it. Be truthful about it. And that's my two cents on that. Now coming back to what I was discussing earlier. In regards to getting disappointed... I know that I have an instinct to instantly detach, which is what I, I did recently. Because I don't know about you guys, but I just, I'm a very strong believer that you can't heal in the environment that broke you. It's not possible. How, how can you get better looking at that person every day? How can you get better talking to that person every day? You can't. It's just going to bring up a fresh set of wounds every single day. And you're cutting yourself deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's not going to stop. Then you're going to wonder where you went wrong. When you're, you know, depressed. But the truth is, the signs come early. We don't stop. We keep going. We keep going forth. Recently, with everything that's been going on with me, I've been having such a hard time to even record and be active in my own Discord, in my own things. And people don't talk about this enough. They think that the second, you know, you are on social media, and maybe people know two, three things about you, like, you ain't famous, but you know what I mean? Like, people are starting to listen to your work, people automatically think that your problems disappear. That's far from the case. I can assure you that. And when you're trying to become a better Muslim, your problems will honestly never disappear. Allah tests those that are closest to Him. So when you are tested, you see the true cause of someone. It's okay if you want to detach. But don't isolate yourself from those that love you. It's okay if you want to be away for two, three days. But you need to get back into contact with the people that truly love you. The people that love you are there for you as you are. The day you accept your flaws, you will love yourself with your flaws. And I wanted to share something in here. When you detach yourself, you become very lonely. And then you start to realize things about yourself that you don't like. Whether it's physical, emotional, mental. And you'll start on this little self-care journey of taking care of yourself, of taking care of different aspects of you. Maybe you want to start working out more. Maybe you want to stop overthinking. You will take care of these things and you will do these things and you will accomplish a lot of things. But sometimes you might come across a characteristic of yourself that you can't quit no matter what. Example, anxiety. Maybe you have horrible anxiety. No matter what medication, no matter what law you do, no matter what you do, this anxiety or just overstressing, overthinking, it won't leave you alone. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who talks to you. It doesn't matter what therapist you go to. It won't leave you alone. And I feel like this is where, in your self-care journey, you learn unconditional love. Unconditional love is loving someone, in this case, yourself, without any conditions, without having to worry about who you are as you are. You're going to love yourself, even if you overthink. You're going to love yourself, even if you have anxiety. There's certain things that make us who we are. And when you accept your flaws, no one can criticize you for them. You'll attract people that will love you for as you are. But you need to do that for yourself first. One of the hardest people that I ever really encounter in my life, and sadly, I end up encountering these people quite often. I feel like I'm stuck in a circle. Is I meet people... Who think that expressing emotion and expressing what's wrong and having a civil conversation about a simple problem is fighting. And then they instantly think, you're fighting, you're being crazy, you're doing this, you're doing that. Like, I hate this, but I've, I've had way too many encounters with people in my life that when you sit them, sit them down, you're like, hey, let's talk about this. This is how I feel. This is A to Z. This is how I feel. And now let's make a plan on how to get out of this. But some people, they just want to focus on the problem. They don't want a solution. I'm the type of person that if you let out whatever you want to say about the problem, I've let out whatever I wanted to say. Let's make a solution because what's the point of us just sitting here being negative, being upset, being hurt about it? What's, it's not going to change anything. 
So you might as well make a solution. However, a lot of the people that I've met instantly think that when you give any constructive criticism in the nicest way, and I mean like out of love, out of good decency, and you go about it the right way. I'm not talking about blowing up someone's DM with disrespect, telling them that they do everything wrong. No, no, no. I'm talking about in a nice way. You sit them down, take them out for food, like you talk about this. This is what's upsetting me. Let's see how we can navigate this. They get upset. They start gaslighting you. They tell you that you're crazy. They tell you that you're stupid for feeling the way that you feel. That's not That's not how it works. You don't get to decide how your actions make someone feel. That's, that's not your decision. That's not your decision. That's not your decision. But if you choose to stay, that's your decision. There are certain people that when you tell them like, hey, your actions hurt me. They're like, oh my God, I can't do anything good for you. You must think I'm the worst person in the world. And then they cut you off. It's like it was one problem, bro. If you really want to make something work, you'll sit there, you'll talk about it, you'll make it work. If there's a will, there's a way. But certain people, they just don't want to hear anything. They don't want to hear about how your actions negatively affected them. They'll gaslight you till the end of time. There's no point in being around with people like that. The thing is, again, too many of us are comfortable. Too many of us are comfortable with the idea of, what we have but this is again where it comes in what's meant for you won't miss you so if something is hurting you and you really really love it be honest is love painful is love hurtful it's not it's a gift from allah you're gonna have to let go of the people that hurt you and if they change they fix out their act they'll come back allah will bring them back but allah's not gonna take something away from you unless you know there wasn't a hidden good behind it I was thinking about this thing recently, which honestly blew my mind. If you think about it, all of us are in a way living a perfect life. And I'll explain why. We all know that Allah's qadr and Allah's divine wisdom is amazing. There's no shadow of a doubt. So when you're living according to your qadr, you're living your perfect life. Now, it may not be perfect because you'll have problems. You'll have, you know, things in your dunya that will stress, stress you out. But when you follow your qadr, with a side of tawakkal and hope and faith and just everything else that needs to be there, you'll realize that no matter what happens, I'm living in Allah's perfect divine plan. And there's no, not, no one can take that away from me. No one can interrupt that except God. So that's why sometimes when the plan and what you're going through isn't clear, you need to make your trust in the one that is running everything a lot more stronger. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know who runs everything. So make a good tie with the one that runs everything. Another thing I recently learned is, you guys know that statement that your Lord is what you think of him? Hardest statement to ever digest, honestly. And I've talked about this in other episodes. There's been a lot of times when I committed sins and I was just stuck up on the negative emotion. Even if I repented, I was like, there's no point. Allah's not going to forgive me. There's no point. I just feel horrible. There's no point. I just feel like I'm stuck in a circle. Like... It comes down to who said that. No one. Allah is what you think of him. Now you may mess up. You may think, why would Allah even want anything good to do with me? But that's your thinking. Allah is merciful. We are not. Let's be honest. As humans, we're not. So you need to be merciful with yourself. You need to start practicing it. You need to be patient. And you need to realize that if you're expecting to be forgiven, you want Allah to forgive you, you have to think of Allah like that. You want something good to come your way? You have to think of Allah giving you something good. You have to think like that. If you don't start thinking good, you won't attract good. I once read this quote. It said, You are so stuck up on the life that you want to live, this perfect life that'll come in the future, and you're spending your current life just thinking about how great your life in the future will be and how bad it sucks right now that you're doing nothing but growing and nourishing a more bad life because what you have right now you're unsatisfied with and you're convincing yourself that in the future i'll be happier i'll be happier i'll be happier it sucks right now it's not good right now i'll be happier later but you're just so caught up on what's bad right now that you're forgetting that you're just increasing yourself in a bad situation. The more you ponder upon something, the more attention you give it, the more it grows. Likewise, if you put more thought in getting good, receiving good, being happy, being grateful, that's exactly what you'll get. Why wouldn't Allah want to give his servant that thinks good of him good things? It's not easy. Allah knows it's not easy. You think it's easy to sit here 
when everything is falling apart and think, oh yeah, Allah's going to give me something good. It ain't easy. But that's why Allah rewards the one that does it. So make that something that you start to do. Your happiness will come when you decide to realize that no matter what happens, no matter who comes in here, no matter how happy I get with someone, no matter what this dunya really offers me, true happiness is from submission. It's from realizing that I'm not in control. We try to take control of everything in our life because it makes us feel better and it makes us feel like we're doing something and it makes us feel like, you know, we're just a lot more productive. You can't be in control of your life. You can be in control of your decisions, what you want to do to an extent. But after that, it comes up to Allah. If it is out of your hand, then let it out of your mind. This is a quote that I started to try my best to follow. There's a lot of situations that we hold on to that are not in our control. You can't change it. You can't go to the past to change it. You can't go to the future and make things right. You can't fix the relationship with the person you have right now. You're struggling with your family. Whatever it is, it's out of control. It's about how they reacted. It's about what they did. You tried your best. You repented. You did all you could. You can't fix anything. So why are you putting your mind to it? You can only do what Allah has allowed you to do. And if it's out of your heart, it's out of your hands. It deserves to be out of your mind. This is very, very hard. It's not easy. We take one situation, we stress, we stress, we stress, we think, we think, we think. But dude, you have to let it go. Holding on to something bad that weighs you down is going to destroy everything you've progressed on so far. That's not fair. And that's not fair to yourself. You can't do that. Another thing is that, you know, when we get hurt a lot by people, we get severely disappointed. At one point or another, we want nothing to do with people. And unintentionally, we'll start to become very crude, very mean, very ignorant, very this, very bad. And we can't punish people for the way that someone has treated us. We can't be mean to people because someone else did something wrong to us. That's not how this life works. And if we were to act like that, we're only damaging ourselves before we damage anyone else. I've made a whole episode on this. You think seeking revenge, you think not forgiving someone's going to benefit them? No, it's going to hurt you. You're going to think about it. You're going to be on the situation. I have a lot of situations where I sit there sometimes late at night and I'm like, how in my right mind did I let someone disrespect me like that? And I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, man, I, I, mm, if I could go back in time, I'd change everything. But I can't. I can't. So why? Why should I waste my time now? And you know what? Maturing is realizing that sometimes, even after you make the right decision, you're going to be sad. You can't expect yourself to be all happy. I did the right thing. Allah's going to love me. It's not always that easy. It's not always that easy. You're going to question if what I did was right. And if you want me to be honest with you, like I mentioned earlier, I let go of some things this morning. I'm sitting here questioning if what I did was right. But at the same time, this thing had hurt me so bad. I struggled to make my own podcast episodes. I, I couldn't even be active on my own Instagram. My own personal life was getting a toll. It was getting affected by this. So clearly it wasn't good for me. I can sit here and think about it and think about it and think about it and not progress. Or I can let it go and realize that there's not much I can do in my hands. And after Allah has shown me his guidance and shown me that maybe this is not the right decision for me right now. I do what I can accordingly and I, I move on move on one thing that i highly recommend you guys to do is get out of your routine go out go to the store go shopping go get something to eat leave the state if you can like do something impulsive that's halal and fun like do something like that you can't sit in your home all day being depressed about what could have been what should have been why to go like that it's okay it wasn't in your control it wasn't in your hands you did the best that you could Allah knows you did the best that you could. So you need to just believe in his mercy. This is why I'm saying healing through acceptance is vital. When you accept that this is how it's going to be. This is the situation. I can't control it. I can't change this person. I can't fix this. You're going to heal. Because you're going to realize that if it's not in my hand, it doesn't deserve to be in my mind. If it's, if it's not in my hand, it doesn't deserve to take a toll on my heart. Because as a human being, you did all that you can. Now, of course, you should make dua. You should ask Allah for help. And yeah, you can detach yourself from the people that are bad. But don't stay disappointed and detached from the people that you love as well. 
What did they do? What is their fault? They didn't do anything wrong. We can't grow and become bitter people. You can't let this world make you bitter and ruin your ahira. Although, if you want me to be quite honest with you, that's the goal of this world. The lifestyle, the ideal lifestyle of chasing money, you know, chasing girls, chasing that, it's going to make you bitter. And that's going to ruin your ahira. At one point in my life, I really hated the fact that I had a nice heart. And I was like, every single person takes advantage of me. People walk over me. Like, I've, and it still happens. It still happens. If you guys think anything changed because of this podcast, it hasn't. People still walk over me. People still do. And I still, I still mess up. I still sometimes allow it to happen. Until recently, you know, I started focusing a lot more on my worth. And your worth is something that you have got to narrow your attention on. Your worth is not determined by people, like I mentioned. Your worth is not determined by how people decide they want to be with you one day. And like I mentioned earlier, your worth is about you and what you choose to tolerate. And when my worth and my respect was obliterated and it was hurt over the past few months i called it out and i said it i was like this situation it offended me it hurt me it disrespected me and it wasn't it was undervalued to me it wasn't fair and to be truthful i had to leave the situation the person understood but they weren't 100 percent on board it wasn't 100 percent comprehension that's okay but you have to leave Because when you know that you're being undervalued, when you know that you are not being treated good enough, you're doing it to yourself. The second you start to wonder if I deserve better, you deserve better. Because if you were getting better, you wouldn't be sitting there thinking, do I deserve better? Am I being treated okay? Am I being treated according to my worth? No, you would know that. You would know it and you would feel it. You would be fulfilled. Your self-respect has to be stronger than your feelings. It has to. You have to overpower You have to overpower your emotions. It has to be stronger. You can't allow your respect to be correlated with your emotions and get walked over and stepped over. You can't. And majority of the times, when you're wondering if this situation is good for me, am I happy here? If you're getting anxiety about leaving someone, your anxiety makes situations a lot more drastic than they actually are. I, last night, was awake all night with anxiety, wondering, oh, is this going to go well? Is this going to go well? Woke up, nothing even happened. I was like, shoot, I'm an idiot. Your anxiety makes things a lot more worse than they actually are. You do it to yourself. You worry yourself. You do it to yourself. Why? Because you are mixing your self-respect with your emotions. Those two things have... No, they don't. They don't... You don't want to mix those. You don't. You need to make your self-respect more than your emotions. And here's another truth. Saying how you feel won't ruin a real connection. If the connection's real... It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what is this is. You're going to work through it. And again, this is where color comes in. What's meant will be. Who's real will stay. So it's time to start being loyal to your peace of mind. I know that I had to start being loyal to my peace of mind and it's not easy. Because I'm, I'm very lonely now. And I'm very isolated once again. I'm very confused once again. I'm feeling overwhelmed once again. But I know that I have to be loyal to my peace of mind. When you allow things to rub under the rug and you push them down and you tell yourself, it's no, I'm, I'm reading it wrong, I'm overthinking, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, it's only going to come back and hurt you 10 times harder. And I know that every single person listening to this probably has some relation in mind, some friend, some something that makes them think even work, that makes them think that they are compromising their self-respect. And if you are, let it go. Allah says himself. Allah will, Allah always gives you something better when you leave something for his sake. And to be to be truthful, sometimes what you leave, you'll be confused if it, was, if it was even bad. I left something, I'm confused if it was even bad. I don't know if what I left was right. I don't know if I was even right for leaving. I don't know. But I also know that this thing really affected my iman. It affected my mental health. It affected me emotionally. It made me sad. So from the seams of it, maybe it's not good. And I, just like everyone else, manipulated myself. And I told myself, you're overreacting, you're overthinking. I gaslighted myself. But Allah sent his guidance. So if you're trying to heal, first is to accept. Accept whatever happened, happened. Accept that this is Qadr. Accept that this is life. It's not always going to be fair. But God is fair. Sometimes you're going to have to stand up against injustice. 
You won't necessarily see everyone else doing it. You might be alone. It's okay. When your heart is feeling discomfort, let it go. When your heart's iman is on a line, let it go. No one should have to make you stay in a situation where your iman is going drastic. You shouldn't have to stay with someone that doesn't understand your real emotions. You shouldn't have to feel the need to detach yourself every single time when you're with certain company. You shouldn't have to feel disappointed every time you put trust into someone. That's the big one. You are deserving of trust and of loyalty and of good reciprocation back. But when that person will come, I don't know. None of us do. None of us. But Allah will bring that person at the right time. And like I mentioned earlier, Allah will make you go through bad people so you can appreciate the good ones. And sometimes I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, I've been through enough bad people. I know my bad people and I show me the good one. And you'll be surprised. I've, I've met people that were great and then I found out some very scary things. And I was like, human beings are deceiving. You only see what you are allowed to see by someone, what Allah shows you. One time or another, Allah might reveal someone's true colors. And when you see those colors and you know they're bad, run, run, run. Don't allow yourself to get deceived. And at the state and the time that we're in in our life, you can sit here, you can try to make relations, you can try to make friends, you can try to go out and be social, have people to confide and trust in. But until Allah really honestly brings the right people to you at the right time, Every single person might hurt you and might not benefit you unless Allah wills. So if you're looking for good company, you're looking for someone to confide in, you're looking through acceptance, you're looking through healing, it comes from Allah first. The biggest thing that I can tell you is ask Allah for guidance. Allah will always give you guidance. There's no reason Allah won't give you guidance. Your heart, if whether, I know there are a lot of people that are not Muslim listening. If you want to find the true religion, ask God for guidance. I won't be surprised if you end up at Islam telling you the truth. No confirmation bias, telling you the flat truth. If you are Muslim, dealing with people that might have hurt you, ask God for guidance. You'll find out some very crazy things about them. And it's not going to be easy to take in. But you're going to hear what you need to hear. Because if you ask for guidance, you got to have the backbone to take it in. And as of right now, it's not easy for me either. But that's why I'm open about it. Because too many people sit here, give da'wah and talk about Islam. Oh, you know, my iman's so high, I never have problems. No, no. You can have a high iman. You can still have lots of problems. Our prophets, peace be upon them, they're the best iman in the world. They had, a, had so many problems. More than all of us combined. So, I'm, all, I'm honest with y'all. I got problems. I'm going through so many different things that make me feel overwhelmed. The whole point is, as a community, as everyone that listens... I encourage you to fight against the people that do injustice, oppression, disappointment, break hearts, that make you feel the need to detach yourself every second, that drain your energy, that make you question Qadr, that make you question Iman, that make you question religion. Let it go. Let it go. Now, everyone's not going to be like that. You're going to meet great people. Not saying you won't. But it's going to come on Allah's timing. If you can take one thing away from this episode, go right now. And ask God for guidance. You may be on the path of the right religion. You may be on the path of praying, doing everything right. But there might be some aspects in your life where you need guidance. You'll be surprised at what you find out. Go ask God for guidance. I hope that this episode benefited someone. I want to finish this off by saying, if you are a girl, please join my girls only discord. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. Beautiful girls having so much fun up in there and I one of the things I really love about it is that we are very very open about mental health we all have bad days and we're all just talking about it we're all there for each other so definitely join if you're feeling lonely you know you need company whatnot alhamdulillah I can confirm that everyone up in there is amazing um, if you're having or going through a hard time my dms are open to you I'm here for you and I pray that God keeps all of you happy assalamualaikum